Greetings to all and welcome to a new video about another rotational mechanical system. In this video we will discuss the determination of inertia, the damping coefficient, also the spring constant of a rotational mechanical system. We will work out our calculations step by step and also verify these in MATLAB simulations but also using Simulink and the Simscape. So let's look at our problem but before we move on to the actual problem let me first briefly discuss the rotational versus the translational mechanical system that will be helpful for our discussion first the translational we know this is a second order system we have a mass the damper and also the spring here which is of course with a damping coefficient b and also the spring constant k this on this system on this mass m we will apply a force and that will then cause this system to move in that direction to the right side and also of course to the left side so it is actually a response to this force now you can now set up the second order differential equation for this system just using the newton's second law and this will be then the result so this is quite familiar business what you now will have is looking at the each element is for a spring, for a damper, and also for a mass that you can relate the velocity and the force, and also the, the displacement and the force by using these formulas. Now, by converting that to the frequency domain or the Laplace parameter, we can determine easily that we have a k or b times s or ms squared for these three elements in this equation and a similar form for the rotational part this is the rotational mechanical system we will use instead of an m the mass we will use the moment of inertia now in that's actually the only difference and then the b is still the same of course it has a different unit and also we have the sp spring constant which is also k again a different unit but the applied input signal or input input uh, for this system is not force anymore but it is torque and the response for this system is the angular displacement which is given here by theta and this this differential equation looks very similar to this equation except that you have the j capital like j instead of the m so again you have the second order or the second derivative of the displacement here, which is also the second derivative of the angular displacement here. Now, in a similar form for the play, uh, the situation for the B, for the damper, and also for the spring concept, but at this time it is all in terms of theta. And the right hand side is the what you have as an input signal, which is in this case a torque. In the same form, you can set up the table where you have the torque versus the angular velocity and also the torque versus the angular displacement and these are the formulas and again you can convert that to the Laplace or the frequency domain to have this differential equation converted to the Laplace domain. Now this is the only difference actually between the rotational and the mechanic, uh, rotation mechanical system and the translation mechanical system just uh, knowing that the moment inertia will be used instead of the mass and also we have different units for the B and the case here and our input is of course torque instead of the force okay now let's move on and discuss our example for this video which is then the following we have this system which is the rotation mechanical system using a mass the damper and also the uh, rotational spring this response is given we have a step input torque of a magnitude of 20 newton meters so that's actually how much we have applied at the input and we would like to determine the motor inertia damping coefficient b and also the spring constant k for this rotation mechanical system so the input is this and this is the response this is the uh, black line is the response so we will determine that so how do we work this out now before we move on to the actual situation first set up your differential equation again j times the second derivative of or theta which is our angular displacement plus the b times the first derivative of the angular displacement plus k times the 
angular displacement itself is equal to the torque. So that is just again the Newton's second law, but then for the rotational mechanical systems. Now from here, from the time domain, we move to the frequency domain. So for a second order term, second actually derivative term, used s squared. First derivative term used s, and for the zero. Uh, the uh, derivative term you only use what you have here and you just replace the t's by an s so that's the only thing you do from going to from a time domain to the s domain okay that's done now we can then collect the terms here on the right hand side and we have this expression now we need to have the system transfer function which is the input is the t which is the torque Output is the angular displacement, which is the theta. So we will have to have output over input, which is then 1 over this complete expression, which you actually saw, uh, see here. Now we can rewrite this as shown here, such that we have an s squared plus a coefficient times s plus another constant, which is then easier to determine later on the required moment of inertia, damping coefficient, also the spring constant for this rotation mechanical system. Now the system model, now for an all pole second order system without any zeros or any delay, this is the general model we can use for a second order system. You can see there's only poles here, there are no zeros or any delays involved. Now what you see here is the following, you have the KDC, which is the steady state gain or a DC gain of your system. So this is the gain at the steady state condition. This is the natural radiant frequency. So this is the sort of the frequency where you will have your oscillation if there is no damping. And this is the damping ratio, which will reflect your amount of overshoot. So these are the three parameters we will need to determine in order to determine then the J, B and a K, which is required for this example. Now, observation from the graph. What can we observe? From, from the output waveform, we can see from the shape and also actually from this differential equation that this is a second order system. So, we can then say the following in addition to the steady state value of this angular displacement, because it is the angular displacement in radians is going to 100 radians. We can see this here, so it's given by this expression. It is also that the peak time here is 3.2 seconds and at the peak time we have a value of 138. So that is what we read from this plot. So this is the information we have collected by just looking at the graph. Now the parameters from this graph and also reflect that to the model is the following. You can now say the DC gain is actually the how much we have put in and how much we have actually got from our response. So we have actually put in 20, but we got 100 as a DC value. So our steady state value is 100, but we have put in 20 newton meters. That is actually just also a steady state value. So 100 over 20 is Five. That's actually our KDC or DC steady state gain. Now, how about overshoot? Overshoot is always how we, how much you get maximum, so the maximum value minus your steady state value over the steady state value. So that's the percentage that will give you as a scalar value of 0 0.38 here. So the peak value minus the steady state over the steady state. Now this can be then convert to the damping ratio, which is then the reflection from the MP, which is our overshoot. And then you can use this formula. We have also used this in other videos where we discuss the root local method and also other uh, examples. And this is then approximately 0 0.294. Okay, now we have another one, which is the natural radian frequency, which is linked to the peak time using this formula. So you can see omega n is pi over the peak time times the square root of 1 minus the damping ratio. Now we have now everything. We know the peak time from the graph. We just determined our damping ratio. If I, if I now substitute everything, I will get 1.027 radians per second. Now I have now collected all the information I need for this model. So the KDC is known. The omega n is known and also the zeta is known. So let's move on and 
again set up the model now we have this model and we know this these are the values okay now compare now this to the actual gs we have set up that's just comparing the terms so you just compare the like terms and then determine then the required values for the moment inertia the the, uh, the damping coefficient also the spring constant so this is actually the following you say the numerator is kdc times omega n squared is actually one over j so j is then one over that kdc times omega n squared now do we know the omega n and also the kdc yes that's all here substitute that in here so the j is the moment of inertia will be then 0 0.190 kilograms uh, times uh, meter squared so we know now the value of the moment of inertia in a similar form you can now say okay b over j is then equal to 2 times zeta times omega n or beta is then or b i mean b is then equal to 2 times zeta times omega n times the j and we know the j that's already determined here 0 0.19 so if you put everything in here you will get 0 0.150 newton meters per radians per second so there's a different unit again than in the translational mechanical system now the next one is omega n squared or omega n which is just this and you look at this part because that's the constant that's the k over j so the k will be then j times omega n squared again we know the omega n squared and also our uh, j is known so we can just move on and that will be then 0. 200 newton meters per radians again a different unit than in the translational mechanical system so we have now the necessary calculations done and that's actually also what we have required we will of course check that this is indeed correct in our simulations so this we have so far this this is our model we just substitute everything let's say the kdc the omega and also the zeta and this is from the values here from the j b and the k now, if i now work this out you will get approximately the same in this case almost the same if you round it off to uh, some accuracy so you will get exact same transfer function for your from your model and also from the values we have just calculated okay that's for this part now let's now check also the mechanical system in simulating using simscape now this is the simscape the, uh, the, mo the drawing in simulating using the simscape elements what you have is the following you have a step input torque which is what we have given in our example was 20 newton meters i will reflect that to the scope so i will also have a plot of that i need to convert the simulink signal to a physical signal so that's a converter i need to have because all these green let's say elements are the physical system so i need to also convert my simulic signal to a physical signal now i have also an ideal torque source so i will have to also apply a torque now this is of course given from here but i have converted that to the physical system this is the element i require to do that this is the inertia or the moment of inertia i have for our system and this is the rotational damper and also the rotational spring now if you use this in simulink you can double click on this these elements and also uh, change the value you require or what we have determined of actually now this is another element which is the sensor which will then sense the motion here in this case we can sense the angular or the uh, angular displacement or the angular velocity which is then this w now since we only we are only interested in this angular displacement so that goes to the scope and the c is actually also the reference where you look at which is then the mechanical reference in this case mechanical rotational reference and this is the solver we need to add here to solve this uh, let's say this is dynamic system so all of the C's actually C's go to the mechanical rotational reference and your inertia here if you look and this is again a conversion from the physical system to simulink converter 
And this part we have here is shown here. So this is the moment of inertia, this. This is the damper, rotational, and there's also a spring, the rotational spring. And this is then that, let's say, the reference for our mechanical system. Okay, now you need to first draw this in Simlink using Simscape elements. And then using transient analysis, you can check that our system is indeed reflecting what we have given and also that means that we have calculated the correct moment inertia, correct damping ratio co coefficient and also the correct spring constant. So let's check this. This is the result. You can see I go up 20, so there's a torque. Input 20, there's a red line, there's input torque. And the green line is the response. You can see here the first cursor, so first uh, label here is 1 is giving me 3.2 seconds and I have a value of 138 ra radians. So that is indeed what we have determined from our plot. So this is indeed reflecting what we have, what, we, uh, what is given in this example. What we also see is, let's say at some value at steady state, it is approximately 100. You can see it's 99.7, but it will go to 100 approximately at 90.5 seconds. So this is again what we have determined and we can now see that the peak value is correct and also the peak time is correct. So this is a nice result. So we can now summarize from what we have from the graph here and that is a nice result from this simulation. Now moving on to the MATLAB simulation in the case that you want to use your command window where you actually set up a script. You can also set up the uh, unit or the, I mean the step, step response. This is the Y, which is the system what we have given times the input, which is of course 20 over S, which is then the um, conversion from the time domain to the frequency domain. Again, you can see here the overshoot, which was 38 in our case, so it's now 37.9. So pretty close, so that's actually also fine. You can see also the final value is 100, again, as we have given. And we also know that the system here also has a peak time of 3.2. And again, peak value 138. So all of them are correct. So this is from the simulation. And this was what we have determined from the graph before we made the simulation. All right, this was our example about the rotational mechanical system. We have seen that the moment inertia then being rate coefficient and also the spring constant was correct so if you have any questions comments or suggestions about this example please let me know and i will try to answer them as soon as possible don't forget to like and share this video so that we can reach more people for this interesting topics thanks for your cooperation and see you next time in another interesting video take care